What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G 2024 tips and tricks and hidden features. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most out of your device. So this is the Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G 2024. Now this phone is packed full of a bunch of really awesome features and I'm looking forward to showing you my favorites here in this video. Now starting off, the first thing I wanna show you is how to really personalize the device. So all you have to do is just hold down on the wallpaper and you'll see this pop up right here and you can see there's options for themes, fonts, and then more customizations. Now these themes are already here loaded by default. You can see one of them is literally called default, but you can quickly switch between these. So I have chosen the Moto theme right now I'm going to switch over to Seaway and we'll see what that does. And you can see after making that switch, it changes the wallpaper and overall the general color scheme of the phone here. Now we can go back to here and we can even go to font. And if you want to change the font, you can also make that adjustment. So changing the font right there then changes the font system wide. So that's really convenient. I like how you can make these adjustments and really personalize the phone to exactly how you want it to be. Now widgets is pretty much the typical Android widgets option, but then from here we can go over to wallpapers, and of course you can just set your wallpaper, but this feature is really cool, and it's called Made with AI. So we're going to go there, we're going to go to Style Sync, so capture a photo of your outfit to create a wallpaper inspired by your unique style. And then I'm actually going to take a photo of this plant over here, there we go, and it's now generating. So instead of taking a photo of my outfit, as I mentioned, I took a photo of this plant, but the results here are actually pretty interesting. So this is probably the best one that came out of this. You can see here that it's actually a pretty cool design. Now the other ones here that were generated really aren't anything at all. So certainly not really worth keeping or using, but this first one is actually really good. But heading back over to this menu here, there's also another option called personalize. I really like this because it's kind of your one-stop shop to customize everything here in the phone. So I already showed you some of these, such as themes and fonts, but you can even change system-wide colors, icon shapes, the actual lock screen. So let's go here, and you can see that you're able to change the clock face, for example, so you can really make it look different. You can add other data points here too, such as the weather, so that's really awesome. So that's a nice customization. You can also customize this area down here and pick the types of notifications that you're going to have show up here on the device. And then also down in the left and right corners here, you can pick what you want to have here as the shortcut. So by default, we actually have device controls as the shortcut, but if you want to have the flashlight be there instead, we can pick that and then go back. And then now on the lock screen, we have the flashlight here. So you can hold that down, turn on the flashlight, and then hold it again and turn the flashlight off. There's even other options you can add here too, such as QR code scanners. You can directly mute the device from here as well using a shortcut. So a lot of really awesome options. We also have another option here which is pretty unique called fingerprint animation. So we'll pick that. You can see there's the default here. You can also pick boomerang, which is another one, and then chroma dial. So I'm going to pick, let's see, boomerang. Let's try that. And then now. You can see there's a little bit of a different animation there when using the fingerprint sensor. So we'll try that again. So kind of a small customization, but still cool that they even let you customize that. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to get a battery percentage in the upper right corner here on the Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G 2024. So you can see by default there is a battery icon, but it doesn't give us the exact percentage. So you can actually pretty easily enable this. Just pull down the shade here, go to the gear icon for the settings, go to search, type in battery and then from there you'll see an option for battery percentage go there and then you can see it's not enabled so enable that and then now you can see that no matter where we are throughout the operating system we now have a battery percentage in the upper right corner there now also in this battery settings area there's even more great options here that you'll definitely want to check out one of them is battery saver so you can see right now it is off but basically with battery saver enabled, it's gonna cut out a lot of various background tasks and activities and also delay notifications and also turn on dark theme. 
Now, in exchange for that, you'll be getting much better battery life here with the phone. And then from there, once the phone recharges at up to 90%, it'll then turn off battery saver. And then if you do find yourself using battery saver on a pretty consistent basis, then you can also set a schedule here and you can even have it be based on the percentage. So you can see that dark theme is enabled here now that we have battery saver enabled. Now overall though, I don't recommend using the phone with battery saver at all times. That is great of course that you're getting excellent battery life or even better battery life. But at the same time, the phone isn't gonna really perform in exactly the way it should compared to if battery saver is not enabled. So honestly, to get the full experience out of your device, I would not keep it enabled at all times. But certainly when you know you have a long day ahead of you and no ability to recharge the phone, this feature is really valuable. Now, just like any smartphone, the battery inevitably will degrade here on the device. And what I mean by that is, as time goes on, the battery will not be able to hold as much of a charge. Now, fortunately, there are a few options here to kind of help out with that. One of them here is called optimized charging. So basically with this enabled, the phone will recharge up to 80% and then it will slowly recharge up to that final 20% up to 100%. But in exchange for that, the device will get a lot less wear and tear. Another option here uses AI, so you can actually enable this to improve battery while inactive and the device will use AI to learn your behavior and limit background apps when the phone is inactive. Now, if you are looking for a quick and convenient way to access the camera app here on the phone, all you have to do is just double press in the power button, and then just like that, it pulls up the camera app. So that's super convenient there. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is how to take a screenshot with the Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G 2024. And there are quite a few different methods here on the device to actually take a screenshot. So let me show you how to take a screenshot with the phone right now. Now, the first way to take a screenshot is to hold the volume down and power button for about a second here. So you can see after doing that, we have options to share it, edit it, or delete it. The next way to take a screenshot is with the recent apps button. So go to this button right here. And then once you pick an app you wanna take a screenshot of, just tap on this button right there, and it'll now capture that screenshot. Another way to take a screenshot is a feature called three finger screenshot. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Just take three fingers, put them on the display, and then a screenshot will be taken. And then finally, the last way to take a screenshot is by using the stylus. So pop the stylus out of the phone, and then from here you'll see this pop-up menu on the side, and there is an option right there called screenshot. So if you tap on that button, it'll then take a screenshot just like that. But that's how to take a screenshot with the Moto G Stylus 5G 2024. Now with this device, by default, we are getting the traditional Android 3 button navigation. And that's definitely really nice. I know that many people are used to using those buttons to get around their Android device. But this phone does also have gesture-based navigation as an option. So let me show you how to enable that. And if you've never used it before, you might want to consider giving it a try. Now I'm not saying that it's necessarily better or worse, but at least see if you like it. So pull down the shade here, go to the settings, then go to search, type in nav, and you'll see right there an option that says three button navigation. Go there, and you can see it is enabled by default. So what we can do instead is select gesture navigation, and then just like that, those three buttons turn into one line here at the bottom of the phone. So if you swipe all the way up, it'll take you home. If you swipe partially up, it'll take you to your recent apps. And then if you swipe from the side, it'll take you back. What's also nice is that under gesture-based navigation, there are settings here, so you can adjust the sensitivity. You can also pick whether or not you want that bottom bar to be there. So you can remove the bar, and the whole functionality here is still exactly the same. It's just that there is no bar visually present. Now heading back over to the main settings page here, you'll scroll down, and then you'll see an option here called gestures. Now by going to gestures, there's a bunch of different options with one of them being the actual gesture mode, but there's a bunch of different options here that you'll definitely want to try out and some of these are enabled by default while others are not. Now the first one here is called sidebar. So you can see multitask by opening your favorite apps in freeform or full screen windows. So we'll go to sidebar and then this is not enabled, so we'll enable that. And then now with sidebar enabled, you'll see in the corner here, this little bar. So if you swipe over, it'll then pop out the bar. And then you'll see that already there are quite a few applications preloaded in here. Now you can customize this. And actually if you tap here on this little grid, it'll then pop up all of your various apps. So you can be anywhere in the phone's operating system. And then from there you can easily access any of these applications. So that's really convenient. You can also go over to the gear icon here to then customize what you want to actually be here. There's even the ability to add different tools as well. And then you can even add in contacts too. 
You can also grab up here and move this around. So you can put it on the left side if you want. You can move it wherever you want on the right side too. So it is nice that you at least have the ability to further customize this. Now the next feature in this gestures menu is called one-handed mode. So with this device, we are getting a very large 6.7 inch display. And that's great, of course, for most tasks that you do in a smartphone, but when using the phone with just one hand, it can be pretty much impossible to reach all portions of the operating system. So one-handed mode is supposed to fix that. Now, you can see it's actually grayed out right now, and the reason why is because we do have three-button navigation selected. So instead, we need to switch over to gesture-based navigation, and then once that's enabled, we'll go back here to one-handed mode, and you can see we now have the ability to enable it. So now with that enabled, we can literally just pull down here, and it'll lower the entire operating system. Then from there, I can access everything up top here with just one hand, and then to get out of this, just tap outside of it, and then it brings things back to normal. Now, if you don't want it to actually pull down the whole operating system and just the notifications, you can also do that too. So now we can swipe down and then it just pulls down the notifications and then swiping up here gets rid of the notifications. Now you can see here, I did bring back the three button navigation. And actually, if you want to use one handed mode with this method of navigation, you can actually add in the one handed mode shortcut. And basically with that there, it's now going to be on the side of the phone. But when you tap on that, it's then going to put the phone in one handed mode. So that's kind of a nice workaround. It's not quite as seamless though, I feel like, compared to if you had the gesture-based navigation and you're just swiping down, but that is still an option there for you. Now the next option here is called swipe to split. So basically we have to enable this. It's not enabled by default, but if you swipe over and back, it'll then put the phone in split screen. So let's give this a try right now. So you can see I did that gesture there. So then the top app is the web browser, which I had selected first. And then now I'm going to pick the calculator as the bottom app. And then you can see it's a 50-50 split. Now I can adjust this divider as well if I want more of one app and less of the other or vice versa. So that is really convenient. And then for one of the apps to completely take over, just swipe completely over there. And then now we have a full screen app. Also, another way to do the same functionality is go to your recent apps, then tap up here and then tap on split top. And then from there, we can pick the secondary app. So I'll pick this one and it does the same exact thing. Now I already showed you double press power key. This one's interesting, so press and hold power button. So by default, to turn the phone off or to restart it, you do have to pull down the shade here and then go to that button right there. So holding down the power button actually pulls up the assistant. So some people don't like that. So what you can do actually is go here, select power button instead, and then now holding down the side button, we'll just pull up the menu here for powering off the phone, restarting it, and then the other options as well. There's also a couple more awesome options here. So one of them is called quick launch. So if you double tap on the back of the phone, it'll start various custom actions. So we'll go here that is already enabled and then we'll go to the settings. So basically if you double tap on the back of the phone, there's a bunch of different functionalities you can do here. So you can also pick a custom application. So for this example, I'm going to pick Instagram. So now if I double tap on the back of the device, it'll pull up Instagram. But you can see there's so many other options here. Kind of interesting how open TikTok is one of the default options here, but I do like that there's so many different ways to customize this. And this is certainly a nice shortcut to get to various applications. Here's another cool one. It's called Quick Capture. So if you twist your wrist, it'll pull up the camera app. So super convenient. We also have Fast Flashlight. Here's an option. We also have Fast Flashlight. So basically with this feature, if you move the phone in two chopping motions, it'll turn on the flashlight. And then doing the same thing once again, we'll turn off the flashlight. And then there's a few more options. There's lift to unlock. So unlock the phone by lifting it, looking at the screen, pick up to silence, pick up the phone to silence it. And then there's flip for DND. So if you do want to put the phone in do not disturb, just put the phone face flat on a surface and then it'll put it in do not disturb. Then picking the phone back up again, we'll take it out of that mode. And then back here in the main settings area, I want to show you now some display settings. So if you go here, you can adjust and change quite a few things here. So for example, there's dark theme, which I already showed you a little bit when I was showing you battery saver, but you can have dark theme be on a schedule. So if you want it to activate from sunset to sunrise, you can do that. You can also pick a custom time or you can just have it be on at all times. So that's pretty cool. We also have the ability to adjust the colors here. So you can really customize the colors of the actual device's display, which could be great. We also have the ability to adjust the refresh rate. So it's actually set to auto right now. There's also an option for 60 Hertz. So you won't have that faster refresh rate, but in exchange for that, you will be getting better battery life. 
There's also an option for 120 hertz refresh rate to be the default at all times. So of course that's the smoothest mode here. And you can see there's definitely a big difference here when navigating around the phone. And then there is also the option for auto, which is basically smart optimization. And the device will decide when it should actually be in that full 120 hertz refresh rate or save some battery at 60 hertz. Now the drop down menu here is very useful because we get a lot of different options as far as things you wanna do here on the phone. Now, if some things that you're looking for are not here, you can actually go to this pen icon. And if you go down here, you can see that these tiles are not up here with the other tiles. So if you wanna add a dedicated button for dark theme, for example, you can do that. You can even get a dedicated button for the selfie camera. So that's pretty cool too. Or if you find that you're not using some of these options that are here by default, you do have the ability to remove them as well. But this concludes my video on tips, tricks, and hidden features for the Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G 2024. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. But this is Kevin here. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.